1903, aviation, man's conquest of the air, actually began with the successful flight of the Wright brothers near Kittahawk, North Carolina, on December 17th. In France, a few years later, Poisson designed and flew a box kite plane like this. Back in America, President Theodore Roosevelt took his first airplane ride. And came down to earth a pronounced flying fan. No longer content with simple flight, airmen began to maneuver their planes, the next step in aviation development. In 1909, Louis Blériot amazed the world, flying across the English Channel from Calais to Dover. 31 miles in 37 minutes, giving new impetus to experimental flights. Overwater flights stimulated development of seaplanes. Here is an early model landing after the first flight around the Statue of Liberty. One of the first amphibians, capable of taking off from either land or water, the forerunner of today's amphibians. Another first, believed to be the first parachute jump in aviation history. It took plenty of nerve because this fellow was testing his chute to see if it would open. World War stimulated the development of aviation. For the first time, air power became a weapon in the hands of opposing armies, giving wings to war. In 1919, the United States Navy started the first mass flight across the Atlantic, three NC planes leaving for the Azores via Newfoundland. Commander Towers was in charge. Careful preparations marked the flight. NC-4, shown here taking off, was the only plane to complete the flight, reaching Lisbon and going on to England. In daring and efficiency, few pilots equaled the Navy flyers, who started the flight, an epic in aviation. In 1926, Byrd and Bennett, also Navy flyers, wrote more aviation history with a polar flight from Spitsbergen.
returning from their historic flight, they were cheered, flying heroes of the far north. Lindbergh, called the Lone Eagle, made 1927 aviation's red letter year. Unheralded and unsung, he landed at Mineola, Long Island, a pilot from St. Louis who wanted to fly the Atlantic alone. Here is the historic takeoff of his immortal flight on May 20th, 1927. Arriving in Paris, 33 hours later, Lindbergh received the acclaim of the world. Returning to America, Lindbergh was officially welcomed by President Coolidge. New York gave him the first of the paper blizzard receptions, which marked the triumphal return of air heroes. Also in 1927, Clarence Chamberlain, carrying Levine as a passenger, made a record non-stop flight to Germany, another transatlantic trailblazer. In 1928, this 20-ton British bomber, flown at Hendon, England, indicated the formidable war machines which air power was developing. Gyro Pioneer took the first flying windmill across the channel. In Germany, Fritz von Opel experimented with rocket ships. In 1928, lighter-than-aircraft received worldwide recognition when the Graf Zeppelin, leaving Germany, 
across the Atlantic to America under command of Hugo Eckner, the grand old man of airships. Canaries and a baby gorilla. Millions of words were written about the comforts of this transatlantic liner of the sky. Her landing at Lakehurst was but the forerunner of regular service linking the old world and the new. Next year, planes, heavier than aircraft, resumed the healthy competition for aviation laurels. Kingsford Smith flying from Ireland to America. In 1930, Costa and Ballant flew from Paris to New York, the first westward flight between the two cities. In 1930, Wiley Post and Harold Gatty took off from New York on their round-the-world flight carrying the Pathé News rooster insignia on their plane, the Winnie Mae. From Harbor Grace, they flew to Berlin, Germany in record time. Templehof. Then on to Moscow and away from civilization, crossing bleak wastes where a forced landing meant almost certain death. And over the Bering Sea, mountainous Alaska and Canada's wilds to complete a 16,000 mile globe girdling flight at New York. Magellan's of the air. the Navy kept developing lighter than air. We we're aboard the Los Angeles for a training flight.
the sky version of the flying trapeze for hooking on planes. and dropping them off. In 1931, the giant flying boat, the Doix, a 12-engine monster, arrived in New York after a lengthy flight from Europe with many stops en route. Liberty greeted the huge visitor, and aboard, the steward prepared an answering toast. <laughs> Landing in New York Harbor, the giant craft again brought aviation into the headlines, a skyscraper of the air, but a white elephant because it costs so much to operate. Our own Navy, leading in naval aviation development, showed what could be done with floating airfields like the aircraft carriers. aviation, by constant training and improvement, increases its value as the eyes of the modern fleet. made the world air conscious with Balbo's mass flight from Europe to America. Here are the ships of Balbo's squadron arriving at Chicago. Marshal Italo Balbo, then the man of the hour. At the Miami Air Show, our own Army, Navy, and Marine Corps planes impressed on the public mind even further the tremendous advance and possibilities of aviation. Parachute jumping was a feature of the show. <laughs> Setting the pace for commercial transport planes in 1935, Major James H. Doolittle made a transcontinental flight of less than 12 hours from Los Angeles to New York. Doolittle, ace of commercial aviation. The wingless auto gyro is another development that has captured the attention of air-minded enthusiasts. And here is a flivver plane designed to meet the needs of the flying public, commuters by air. The fair 
Rothschild Baby Clipper is another innovation in making air travel more popular. Its grown-up brother, the China Clipper, a Sikorsky flying boat, has already conquered the Pacific. Trailblazing flights with radio reports and all the modern aids to air navigation have led to the establishment of regular service between the Golden Gate and Manila, heavier than air leading the way across the Pacific on scheduled flights. Transatlantic honors go to lighter than air, the Hindenburg establishing the first regular air service between the United States and Europe. also win their share of transatlantic honors. The Lady Peace, piloted by Dick Merrill with Harry Richmond, making a round trip to prove that modern airplanes can do it. most advanced model of giant flying boat yet built in America, a $330,000 seagoing Douglas airliner built for transoceanic service. gyro that is both auto and gyro. Landing near Washington's busy Pennsylvania Avenue, the model can be converted from a flying machine to a highway vehicle in a matter of minutes. The flying car of the future. The last word in modern transport planes shows America's commercial supremacy in the air where our aviation companies have developed flying hotels. <music> Leaving Newark Airport aboard a modern commercial plane is a trip to Cloudland in comfort not even dreamed about a few years ago. Skillful pilots, well-built ships, the latest in radio communications, every possible protection is given air travelers today. Now it is possible not only to fly in comfort, but to dine in comfort thousands of feet in the air and at night to retire in comfort. 
perhaps to dream about those early days of aviation and the heroes of the flying world who made the dreams of today come true. For it is a far cry from the olden days of aviation, the early days of the 20th century when flying was a perilous adventure. Thanks to the Wright Brothers of America, the Voisins of France, and the other gallant pioneers, aviation's development has been a saga of progress, crowned with achievement, so that these pictures seem almost prehistoric to a modern aviation age. A cavalcade of aviation. Baroness de la Roche was the first pictured aviatrix. Glenn Curtis flew from Albany to New York. 1910, the Vicoeve Sloan monoplane made a remarkable flight. 1911, Louis Renault and a passenger flew from Paris to the Puy de Pome. The triplane was a sensation. Albasard constructed one of the first aero buses. Nineteen thirteen, Bielavuki flew over the Alps, the most daring airman of his day. Blario presented an experiment by Pigo flying on a cable which enabled novice airmen to practice taking off and landing. 1914, then the World War and later record-breaking flights, a saga of progress and achievements girdling the globe. Until today, 1937, we see wings around the world, planes that combine speed, security, and comfort in this latest mode of travel. All hail to aviation, a terrible weapon in war, a symbol of progress and peace, the greatest triumph of the 20th century. Thank you.